Previously, when we were examining the page table entries, the various things at level 4, 3, 2, and 1, we left off, for the most part, the consideration of the case where the present bit is set to zero, because we said the MMU doesn't try to parse any further bits out of the entry in that case, and that it would ultimately be an error. So what really happens then if someone attempts to access a linear address, the MMU does the table walk, and it comes across an entry that has present equal to zero? What happens is a page fault. The page fault is interrupt 14, and upon receipt of a page fault, the page fault handler then tries to determine whether or not this is going to be a recoverable fault or a non-recoverable fault. And so this is specifically a type fault, and any sort of memory reference, whether it's instruction fetches or data reads or writes, can cause a page fault. When we talked about paging in the control registers, we said that CR2, control register 2, will hold the linear address that was attempting to be translated at the time that a page fault occurred, so that the page fault handler can go take a look at it and figure out where this was happening. Furthermore, the page fault is one of the types of faults that pushes an error code, and so the page fault handler will be responsible for interpreting that error code. So this is the format of the page fault error code, and there's some bits here that pertain to security stuff that we haven't really covered in this class, so I'm just going to hide those for the moment. And so what is the interpretation of the error code? Well, if bit 0 is set to 0, then this was a page fault caused by a non-present page. If instead it was 1, then there was not some sort of protection violation, such as attempts to write to a read-only page, attempts to execute something that's non-executable, and so forth. The RW is further information to tell you, you know, if this was a protection violation, was it due to a read or a write? US is telling you whether it was something to do with, you know, user mode or supervisor mode causing the fault. The reserve bit, you know, we don't care about. And then the ID bit indicates whether or not this was an instruction fetch or a data fetch. So as was sort of indicated by that bit zero, there's two primary causes of page faults. There's straight up non-present pages, which could be due to invalid mappings, and then there's permissions issues. So let's talk about some of the cases of recoverable page faults. The first is that if a page is swapped out, as in the operating system has decided to remove some memory from RAM, stick it onto the hard drive for use later on if that process tries to access it. So swapping it out to disk would be one reason. Now you should be aware that every operating system has some different sort of format and some of them reuse the unused and ignored bits in the page, uh, page table entry to try to help it look up where this information is. There's also automatic stack growth. So this could be as you're continuing to push things onto the stack and as it grows towards lower and lower addresses, eventually you're going to cross some page boundary. You're going to you know, push information into the top bytes of one lower page. When that happens, the page fault handler should just go ahead and allocate some new physical address range for that particular linear address that now corresponds to the bottom of the stack, and it should just let the system continue. Then there are also attempts to write to read-only memory. These are recoverable if that memory is intended to be what's called copy on write. So if an operating system is trying to optimize RAM usage by using this notion of copy on write, wherein it tries to share memory amongst the different processes, then it can say, okay, now I can see that someone is trying to write to this process. Now I will split off and copy the written, dirty, changed page so that this other process that's trying to do the right will see something different than the original one, which you know has not actually written to this page. So that's another case in which it could be a recoverable page fault. Some of the unrecoverable page faults are just when there's straight up no valid linear to physical translation. This could be because some process has generated an address just you know out of thin air or out of an error and it attempts to access memory at a given address, but that address was never legitimately mapped into memory. This is again why you know, an operating system should initialize page tables to zero so that if someone tries to access a random address that's not expected to be there, it will lead to the MMU hitting a present bit of zero and causing a page fault. And then you know, if it does not correspond to one of the recoverable cases, the operating system can just you know, kill the process or do something else. 
Another recover unrecoverable page fault is an attempt to write to read-only memory if that is not intended to be copy on write. So this is again, you know, some chunk of memory that is not supposed to be shared between two processes. If you try to write it, then the operating system could say, no, this is not copy on write, you're doing something wrong. Any user code attempting to access supervisor memory, well, the operating system, the whole notion of ring zero, ring three separation is that it's trying to stop exactly that sort of behavior. So that's another grounds for termination of a process. And then also the sort of permissions errors having to do with SMAP, SMAP, or XD, things where if the particular operating system, firmware, hypervisor system, if they're using these security bits for their intended purpose, then attempts to you know, execute where you're not supposed to execute, access where you're not supposed to access, should lead to page fault violations and ultimate you know, termination of the offending process.